Welcome to Social PR Secrets. My name is Lisa Bayer and I'll be your host. Today's guest is Joe Fear. If you haven't heard of Joe Fear, he is the co-host of the podcast called Hustle and Flowchart. And actually one of the first podcasts that I started listening to religiously. I don't know why, but up until about two years ago, I just was not into podcasts at all. And now there's a few that I'm totally obsessed with and Hustle and Flowchart is definitely one of them. One of the reasons is I've learned a lot from how they put together their show, their format, their kind of style, a very conversational, laid back way of interviewing, which matches my style a lot when I used to interview different guests for my class that I taught at University of Florida. Fast forward to today, now you're listening to my podcast, Social PR Secrets, where I learned everything I know about hosting and launching a podcast from this guest, Joe Fear. In today's episode, we don't just talk about podcasts. We talk about everything from firing a client, running an agency, transitioning into something that you love, and how to make more and do less. If you enjoy listening to this interview with Joe, where we talk about all of his social PR secrets and more, you might also want to hop on over to Digital Detox Secrets, where Joe and I talk about real life struggles such as depression and even suicide and personal experiences Joe and I talk about different ways that he overcomes his struggles when it comes to digital work-life balance and more. Enjoy this interview and namaste. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. I am so excited to have Joe Fear here. And hey, Joe, how are you? Hey, Lisa. Thanks for having me here. This is great. Yeah, so I'll give and you I'm a- great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a little intro, 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 my favorite part of your podcast intro. Yep. So if you don't know Joe, he is the co-host of Hustle and Flowchart. And one of my favorite podcasts that I listen to regularly, and I don't listen to a lot of podcasts regularly. So there's all kinds of topics here I want to cover. Uh, before we get into it, like first question I want to ask you is, how did you guys name, how did you and Matt Wolf name Hustle and Flowchart? The podcast where did that come yeah from? that's it's a good question and one that's like everyone's like i love that name <laughs> you know it's so it's kind of you know you got the hustle and flow movie which uh you know that's just i always thought you know it's kind of a cool movie but i think it was matt actually that named it and he said it was just like one of those shower ideas that popped up to him and yeah because we were just searching for something funny something that kind of encapsulated our personalities and he he i think he sent me a slack yeah, and I was like, that's that's really cool, actually. I really like it. Nothing out there exists. There's no trademarks or any, you know, issues there. But um, but it's our personality. So hustle is more my personality. You got flowchart, which is Matt. He's a lot more the systems guy, and you know, it's it's. I feel like every good business partnership uh, relationship with your yeah you, know, uh, you know actual light you know partnership in your family. Like I feel like you need a good balance on that. A little bit of the hustle, creativity, and craziness i guess and then then you got the other side that's actually like hey let's lock this down in a system so we're consistent and, what came uh, first the, the podcast or the name because with me when i'm writing an article or when i wrote social pr secrets like i i, I have to come up with like the framework the name mm. is, is always one of the first things or it's close to it where other people are like they have to write it first and then they come up with the name yeah, no, that's a good question. It, the name came first, but we already had the concept of wanting to do a podcast and we had the idea of what it would look like, even though that's morphed over the years now. But yeah, it's, I feel like we need, we, previous podcasts was stuff like uh, Evergreen Wisdom, which is a playoff our Evergreen Profits name. That was like more of a mindset y show. Then we had Online Income Podcast. We're like, these are all lame. <laughs> we need to have something that's kind of out of the box and could be brandable which it has now and it's become our brand more so than our company name which we thought was our brand at first so we had this weird like brand identity conflict thing going on for a while and yeah. so we finally got shaken up a little bit by some of our smart podcast guests and you know we learn on the shows and we implement De yeah definitely <laughs> so i mean i i think that's such a great point about branding with the name and you know let's just talk a little bit about so evergreen profits and how i think was that your agency first like how did you it was you doing before the podcast and how did you guys come up with the podcast idea and yeah yeah no, it, so evergreen profits was the agency originally and i think it was so it's had two iterations of evergreen profits where we literally like shut down the corporation uh the llc at 
after the first go at the agency and we didn't really, we weren't pumped on the agency model, you know, and um, we've been pretty open on saying that too. That That's actually more my background, but I just, you know, I just like the people aspect of business. So that's inherently, I turned into more of a, an agency model. So then I wrote Matt into this agency model kind of reluctantly, <laughs> you know, him, <laughs> him kicking and screaming a little bit, but we had some good clients. So we made it a fun time and we learned a lot. But we're always doing other stuff like affiliate marketing and dabbling with our own products as well in tandem with working with other clients. Uh, but then after a while, Matt and I have always done this kind of separation. Like we started together, but then we're always like doing separate projects, but we're supporting each other. And that was one where, yeah, it was probably a couple of years. And then we're like, okay, I think this is good. We got to go figure some stuff out. And then we came back to it. Um, time was right. And we had more of a motivation and vision. And the second go around was more of like, hey, we want to give our best stuff out here for free. And um, we actually had a physical newsletter. You know, the EGP letter V1 was the, uh, you know, it was a I unique. Yeah. The, uh, yes. <laughs> I always forget to keep them around here. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It looks good. I, I have the prop for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So it started off with us just writing everything ourselves and like really putting a lot of effort into it. Always usually the last day of the month or the day before because, you know, procrastination always takes over. It's yeah, not yeah. just for school. But then it turned into, yeah, the Hustle and Flowchart show is like our thing to the podcast was us just wanting to give away our best stuff for free. We didn't want to keep our best stuff locked behind a paywall we had all these online courses and our newsletter was about a hundred dollars at its peak per month. And we were just like, eh, I, we, this needs to be free. This needs to be, to, you know, we wanted to open up the, to the maths as more than stifle it for just, you know, hundreds or thousands of people depending on the product. So that's kind of why that, you know, the motivation behind everything there. And now the newsletter exists, but it's like way cheaper. It's just based cost of printing and shipping and managing that whole thing. And, essentially from there it's just like giving away our stuff <laughs> and yeah. then we monetize on the back end yeah. i, I want to talk about the monetization part of it but before we get into that i just have to tell you share a quick like story with you so when i was <laughs> growing up my mom was a single mom and mm -hmm. she was the manager of like three or four different um tennis clubs racket clubs racket yeah. tennis and um so i would watch her like doing this I think it was a monthly newsletter, but it was, you know, before computers oh. and everything was like cut and paste and I would help her pick out the artwork and, and, you know, they would do the Xerox, you know, like copies on the copy machine Whoa. And to the numbers. It was like so old school. It wasn't even funny. And then when I was in college, like I, or I think I shared this with you guys, high school, I was into the yearbook yep. and then I got into yep. public relations and everything was on computers and newsletters were like the thing on computers. And then they kind of just went away and became yeah. like e-newsletters. And I think like what I love about what you guys are doing is that you're bringing back like that old school touch of like physically getting something in the mail and then you're mm. also bringing it through the digital airwaves of audio. And I just think that yeah. it's something that's lacking right now that that's, you guys are like just doing an amazing <laughs> job at Thank you. bringing those two together. Yeah. And that's, that's pretty cool that you had this background from your mom in yeah. her racket, racket, uh, days. And, um, that's, that's wild. Cause I remember that story I think you shared on our podcast and, um, yeah, we actually had Brian Kurtz on the show and I think, you know, Brian or, yeah, yeah he's, you know, he's been a legend in marketing, but he, you know, he does a lot of physical offline stuff and he was on our show and we we're explaining our model to him. And he's like, that is brilliant. You're balancing them from, you know, online to offline and then back to online. And there's so much power in that. And of course, when you're sending something in the mail, you're not competing with a lot of other, you know, uh, spammy things or just clutter in general, you know, you're kind of cutting through the fat and, and then, you know, something sits on the desk for most people per, you know, every month, like yours, you know, it's like, Oh, there's my guidebook for strategies. Yeah, it's just, and I'm afraid uh, it's to throw cool. it, throw it away because I might eat it, right? You know, yeah. I just, like have them all in one <laughs> one pile here. But yeah, it's very cool. Well, how do you make money at it, though? Good question. Yeah, so it's not obvious. So we we monetize mainly with affiliate marketing, and that is from a lot of different areas. Typically, we look at like the communities that we've built. So we have the podcast as a community, our email list, our Facebook group, retargeting push crew, you know, browser push notifications. Those are all given the ability to us to follow up with folks. And 
So that's like our big thing is like capture them in a group somewhere. So we're not typically trying to go for the the dollar, the sale on the podcast. It's just, that's a relationship or get to know you, trust building, free stuff, you know, like, hey, this is your, uh, this is just the time to just uh, get to know each other. And then from there, exit points go into these communities. And then from there, we're like segmenting, we're getting to know them a little bit more. And then from there, we're kind of layering in some relevant promotions that are typically synced up with what they're looking for. So if they're on the email list, there's a lot of segmentation going on with tags and, you know, based off the opt-in they came in from, now they're going to see relevant uh, sequences and then other emails. But mainly marketing software tools we're affiliates of, so we'll make 50% or so per uh, sale on those. And then from there, yeah, we have our, we have our uh, you know, the newsletter, but that's kind of just covered in our cost, to be honest. So to put it in its simplest term, just for the audience, maybe public relations professionals or maybe Mm -hmm. just digital marketers or entrepreneurs that aren't, you know, you guys are just like so ingrained in the affiliate world and like everything is just like sequences and you got all this lingo (laughs) going. What is just a basic example? So just let's say um, one of your affiliate, what's what's one of the affiliate platforms that you guys make 50% off? So one of them is called, it's a software program called uh, uh, Thrivecart. So that essentially allows a business owner to, uh, for, I think it's about $600 or so for the basic, we get 50% of that sale. And uh, that'll allow a business owner to essentially allow themselves to take a payment for a product, you know, or or a physical product even. So um, with that tool, then, you know, they can do all the marketing and stuff behind the scenes. So we'll basically, we like that specific tool we promoted for almost five years now. We were like one of the, we were the first public user because we're friends with the owner and, but we've, so when someone listens to our podcast, we typically bring the owner of the, uh, the product on the show, or at least we're going to throw some like hints about some of these things that we have or things that, you know, they're, they're addressing problems and needs of our listeners. So we're aware of this. We're constantly, you know, surveying and getting feedback and asking for feedback from our audience. So then we know what kind of offers they're really into, uh, problems that they're looking to solve. And then so that's it, all we're really doing. It's kind of like basically um, being a paid influencer if you're an affiliate, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, it's perfect. Kind of like public relations speak. Um, affiliate yeah. marketing is almost the same as, or the similar to influencer marketing, but you're getting paid and you have to let people know they're an affiliate. You can't just be like, hey, mm-hmm. you know, buy this without having the disclosing. Yeah. Disclosure. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I just think that, um, you know, that's kind of affiliate marketing has had a bad reputation in some areas, especially if, you know, the marketing arena. So I just think it's refreshing and it's also interesting. And, you know, in this day of COVID and, you know, we're pre post, who knows where we are with COVID (laughs) today. Right. Right. Um, you know, everyone's looking for different ways to, um, you know, maybe have a side hustle or maybe add income. So, yeah. um, you know, just looking at how you guys leverage your podcast with affiliate marketing, I think is like super interesting. And any tips that you can give if somebody is just starting out? Definitely. So that's, you brought up a great point that it's a good kind of like side hustle for any business. So a lot of folks will see affiliate marketing as like, oh, that's for those weird spammer people to do. Or, you know, like you said, there's a bad rap sometimes, you know, like, oh, they're just going to send me a bunch of offers and not think about it. It's like, well, don't be that person then. (laughs) You know, like we take the approach of listening to our folks, uh, having a genuine relationship and then giving them something that they need that they're literally asking for. So uh, with all that data, we're able to uh, realize like we just made our, our full business. But like when we talk to other business owners, what's to say you can't offer a complimentary service that you might not want, you know, it's a problem that your current customer needs, but you don't need to fulfill this thing. You can, you know, have the confidence that they're not going to go away from you because the trust is already built. If you have a customer, typically they're trusting you in some thing. Your goal there is to keep their trust. But at the same time, it's like if you're um, being the connector is super valuable. So if there's some other problem they have, but you can't solve, well, look in your Rolodex. There might be some really cool, uh, you know, service or product that you might know the person that offers it. So do a little deal there and they'll give you, you know, a percentage of the sale for that, for that lead. Or go to one of these places, you know, you can go to a website of a tool that you like and scroll to the bottom and you'll see some, you know, affiliate marketing program in there. But it's a perfect bolt-on for any business. So just know that 
affiliate marketing, you don't have to do the fulfillment, not the customer service and all that, but you do have to present it in a way where it's a benefit and it's a huge value add to your customer because you don't want to lose that trust. I think that's always in our mind. Yeah. And it's always fun. I mean, I'm, you're a connector for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm a connector and I love recommending. I just, you know, I love when people ask me, Oh, which of these should I get? Or what do you think about this? And I, you know, like connecting people and also connecting brands. So I think if you have that and your personality, that this is just like perfect. Oh my God. Yeah. And if you're in public relations, hopefully you're a connector, you know, like, (laughs) otherwise there's so (laughs) much power in this. Like it's crazy. Like the power of the podcast alone is it's allowed us to be super connectors really it's just kind of thrown gasoline on this thing and it's yeah. wild because the opportunities just are abundant but even when you're just connecting people like that without a podcast you're just you know you're you which is great you know i'm like lean into that connectorness and start helping people because they're not going to run away from you i think that's what people get hung up on they're like oh but they're not going to buy my stuff anymore it's like no 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 they will. Yeah. You're just going to sell more and you're actually probably growing a better relationship with your customer because you're solving more of their problems. Right. And I mean, obviously you're vetting that brand or platform oh, yeah. or product because you, know, you, you want to stand behind it. So, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of goes without saying. So that that's really cool. Um, just being a podcast host, I want to just talk about, you know, it, it's hard being on the PR side and um, media pitching mm-hmm. is just like, you know, for some people, it's just, it's, it's hard. It's basically yeah. like sales, you know, but you have to create the relationship or you have to like find that touch point, that connection point, that, you know, point. So um, what, do you, what tips do you give for not just pitching you guys, but just pitching in general that you see just would be helpful? Yeah. So we lean into our network a lot in our relationships. And I think that for us, it starts with the podcast, but for anyone, I mean, I was doing this prior to a podcast is, you know, we're going to conferences and, you know, when we go to conferences, we typically find ourselves at the bar, uh, Mm. typically because when we were starting out in the beginning, we didn't have the money to pay for all these conferences. So we're like, well, the bar is cheaper and that's where everyone seems to go and talk. And when they have a couple of drinks, then you get the truth out, (laughs) you know? So it's, but um, not in a malice way or anything, but like, that's where we would come up with, that's where we met some of the friends that we still have to this day. And actually a guy, Thrivecart, his name is Josh Bartlett. Um, He's the creator. We originally connected because we were in a group online and we went to some of these conferences and now it just developed into this really cool relationship 12 years later or something. And we're still, you know, in business together. But um, yeah, like the big thing is start with your network and we all have a network. And like, so it's customers asking them like, how can I help you? Or do you want to hop on the phone call and I can figure out, you know, maybe there's a, some, sometimes I used to do this where it's like block off a couple of days to just, you know, every month or so to just hop on and chat with your clients and just see what's going on, you know, kind of like expose some of these opportunities and things that are going on in their head that they're not totally telling you. And, or, you know, maybe they'll make a connection for you. That's something yeah. that we're, we're looking for. So I would say tap into the people that already trust you. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that, you know, being stuck at home the past few months has, has actually helped in mm. some ways. I mean, it's hurt because we can't go to conferences. I mean, we saw each other live right before COVID hit, but that was my last conference. And I don't even know if yep. there's going to be another live physical conference before the end of 2020. So I've taken advantage of, you know, just being able to just like, you know, reach out to people, have Zoom calls. I mean, even just taking the time to people have more time to read even messages that they're getting that because they're just not traveling. I mean, if you just think about it, like what excuse do you have to not be working? Like really just like, it's like either your work or you're, or you're doing something with your family, but you're, it's never like, Oh, I've been traveling. You know, I haven't. Uh, That's not a good excuse anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I can't use that one. Yeah. Even being on vacation is really not even, you know, cause there's nowhere to go. So I just think now is like a really prime time to connect with people, even if you can't see them in person. Yep. I would agree. And that's, that's, that's the thing is so pitching in general, like just ask your network and ask for referrals, ask for connections. I know you and I have helped each other for in that respect. And I mean, posting on Facebook is just so easy enough. It's like, Hey, we all have a group or on LinkedIn people trust and like us there. Like why not ask those people, you know? And I just thought of somebody I have to ask you about now. Oh yeah. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Or afterwards. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Um, so I was just doing a little bit of background, look, reading your bio that I can't believe Uh I read it before. Did you, who wrote your bio? 
uh, what on the on right the pod, on the yeah. uh, website yeah. itself? Yeah. Yeah, that it's was really uh, <laughs> you like. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. I like I'm like, it. we got to update. It. <laughs> it was a, uh, it was a Patty, uh, Patty Woods. She's, she was on our team a couple years back and she wrote it. We were just like, let's just be goofy and show our personalities off. Yeah. No, yeah. it's, I think it's like much better than like the typical LinkedIn bio, you know, we really like it. Yeah. I was like cracking up when I was reading it. <laughs> yeah. It's probably because you know us. So you're like, who the heck? <laughs> I got to reread it. It's been too long. <laughs> Well, but there's a couple of things that I was like, oh, I'm going to ask him about this. Oh my God, this is perfect. Go so, for it. Yeah. So one of them was um, your list, your favorite podcast. And it was the one about doing less, wait, wait what was it? Um, work less, make more. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh -huh. can you, I would love to talk about that because I think <laughs> you guys went from agency life to like a much simpler life where you're also being able to make more and do less. Yeah. Right. So yep. what are some tips and tell us more about that? Well, to work in progress, I'm not perfect, <laughs> but um, like today, for instance, I've like, it's Monday as of this recording and came off that uh, holiday weekend, July 4th. Sorry to date this, but uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, I feel like today has just been breezy and kind of just flown. Like I worked out in the morning with my, my uh, daughter and, and uh, wife who went on a walk, worked out and, and like, I don't know, I just feel like we're kind of like creating this environment and that we just really like in the agency life it was like always on call for us at least and um i don't know, it just felt like we were always kind of in demand and now we've which in demand's great but like it was always kind of this open loop in my mind and it would kind of drive me nuts so i'm like i gotta get back to this person i gotta solve this problem you know so i really focus on sol like closing those open loops i actually have it written down next to me because it's kind of popped up in my head the other day um, whenever I kind of get all crazy mentally, I got to go run, I got to work out, I got to move my body and like get outside. I can't be inside. So I was thinking, I'm like, Oh, close the loops and you become alive. Like, like you figure out like how to deal with the present and like life's not a rush. Life is just like, it's long and business is long as well. So we shouldn't be always sprinting in business. And that that was tough for me because I'm the hustle of the hustle and flow chart. So like yeah. Matt kind of drilled that in my head a little bit and figured out like, oh yeah, systems can do a lot of this work for us or email doesn't need to be an urgent thing just because like right now I'm, it's so fortunate. I have like these cool systems and stuff to get introductions all the time. And actually maybe we should talk about that since yeah. you talked about pitching actually, <laughs> it's yeah, the whole yeah. dream 100 thing. I mean, I get into probably two introductions almost a day at this point, And it's like, I love it. It's the, it's what fuels me, fuels our business. But like right now I saw a bunch of introductions from late Friday. And then like, even this morning I was like, holy moly. <laughs> like, but like at the end of the, I used to be like, I got to go back to everybody right now. It's like, oh, breathe. You know, it's like, no, they're not rushing. They're not like weeding. So that open loop got to, got to shut that down. And systems have helped tremendously. Um, you know, in the business we have now, it's heavily reliant on these communities I talked about. So our Facebook group, our email and all these things, we have a system for all that. We have, you know, content calendars and uh, email calendars and things like that. So we kind of expect what's going to happen, you know, even like a couple weeks from now, we kind of have an idea of what's going down. So there's not a lot of surprises anymore. And I feel like the agency just kind of brought up a ton of agency or a ton of surprises all the oh, time or yeah. a fire here and there. I'm like, ah, those still happen, but yeah. at least now they're more in our control. It's constant for sure. And yeah. it's just like, you know, even when you try not to be on the front lines, you're on the front lines. Mm. And um, so I, that reminds me of a story. I interviewed somebody and somebody like pretty prominent and I was, I don't know how it came up, but she shared, and I thought this was the worst system ever that when she gets an email, she answers every email as soon as it comes in. Oh, geez. I'm like, <laughs> drive me nuts. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't think that that's like the best system, but if that yeah. works for you, okay. Yeah. To me, it goes oh against gosh. like all of the best practices that I've heard. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard anybody do that. Yeah. <laughs> like have notifications on everything and you'll yeah. get everything done. Yeah. Ooh, no, you won't. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. Uh, I was also reading about, um, you wrote an article about firing clients. Did you oh, write yeah. article? Yeah. I, I think that was old, but yeah, I'm sure yeah. it rings it was, true still. It was connected to your articles. So do you have any tips on firing clients? Oh, yeah. Um, fire the people or, you don't like. Stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say first, only work with people that you really love. And it took me a long time because I would... 
I would work probably on average. I didn't have like a big agency because I used to do a lot of video work and uh, these uh, called VSLs or video sales letters, which on top of a sales page would be selling a product visually. So I made those with a kind of a small contractor team. I never had like a big agency. It was always working out of the house. So um, and nothing's changed there, but I love it. <laughs> and uh, so, but from there I would work with maybe three people a month, three to four. So it was all manageable, but if like, if I had like one bad client, it would like ruin everything. Cause like you're always in or you're, 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 you're just kind of wrapped up with them for that duration of the project. And typically my projects were about like, you know, a few months, maybe at a time. And some people, they're really good. They continue on if I like them, but I was quickly able to uh, price people out. That would be sometimes my way to fire them. <laughs> it's like, just to be honest, I'm like, okay, well, if you're going to, if I want to deal with you or if I really need this project for some reason, like then I will charge more, <laughs> you know? And um, that's one way to fire them is just price them out, honestly. But um, that's probably not the go-to strategy. I would just be like, have good, strong filters yeah. on, uh, if they're not someone you would want to hang out with, like on a Zoom call for more than 30, 40 minutes, then it's probably not yeah. a good fit. Yeah. <laughs> I love getting the question. So right now I, we love all of our clients and we have for a very long time. It's been a long time since I can ever remember having toxic clients, but you know, mm. every once in a while, somebody that's like working for a client, you know, um, but we get asked the question. So what do you look for in a client and yeah. or what type of clients do you like to work with? And my answer is chemistry. And mm. we want to, we want to let work with clients that we love. And, you know, those are, that's like the first barrier of entry, right? You know? Yeah. Well, that's 80% that. of it probably. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter. Everything else doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah and that goes like, with people on our podcast too. It's like almost everyone on our podcast is from a referral. So mm -hmm. from a friend of ours, like we're going to respect our friends and we've never had an issue. No one's ever failed us. And, uh, you know, like that's kind of our filter there. So I would say, referrals too like that's a huge filter because you're going to attract like people yeah totally yeah. so just kind of going back to you're talking about your communities and mm -hmm. how you keep everything so what are some of the social networks that work best for you and you get the best like let's say exposure and reach or get the most out of and, and what are some tips you can share with that yeah yeah so facebook we've harnessed like a lot recently more organically than we ever have before so our facebook group is probably one of our biggest assets now, just right alongside our email list. Email list is still like the key thing, but obviously it's not social media. Um, but Facebook groups, like I would say that's huge and that's paired up with our podcast. So that's a, that's a nice piece there where we have a consistent schedule and engage with folks. We bring everybody in from the podcast yeah. in there. I love I your Facebook group. Yeah. yeah. So is it, um, can you, can anybody be a member of your oh, yeah. or is it, okay. So yeah. talk, tell us where to find you. Yeah. What Thank is, you. Yeah. It's a uh, flowchartgroup.com. Okay. Flowchartgroup.com. It's just a little redirect. So that goes to Facebook. Yeah. It's totally free. And that's where the listeners on the show. Yeah. They'll go to that's, we call that out sometimes on our podcast. Um, that's where the guests we bring, we try to bring all of our guests. Obviously I'm not going to spam them and say, join our group now, but it's like, yeah, we always try to get them in there. And then of course us, you know, so it's a great way to interact with our community there. Yeah. So that's, that's huge. And we finally branded that with the hustle and flow chart community. <laughs> Only took us a long time. Uh, Molly Mahoney, uh, which I think, you know, Molly. Yeah. Yeah, she called us out on our podcast in a lovingly way. That was uh, a great episode. I mean, did well, I, I learned a lot from that episode. So I think anybody listening, if you want to listen to like just a sample, great episode. Molly's episode oh, is yeah. great because she talks about, you know, this is why I love it because she talks about, you know, getting that organic reach out of Facebook and what yeah. still works, which I think everything that she talked about, you know, is still, it's going to be relevant for a while oh, yeah. yeah well it's the whole um a big takeaway and this is maybe a, a a you know like an open loop for people is like the triangle of trust yes that, i don't know if you remember that but yeah facebook you and your audience it's like but you can take facebook out and put it linkedin you know it's like you got to make each one of them happy yeah enough to make yeah. it really effective and I'll leave it at that. Not let yeah. everybody else <laughs> listen to that yeah, episode. Yeah. Go listen to that episode and then you'll just be like in this whole funnel that you're going to love. The funnel of love. <laughs> funnel of love. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, Facebook, Facebook is probably our biggest. LinkedIn has been pretty good to us organically with video uh, lately. 
and um and we do paid media i wouldn't say that's you know that's not gonna show us the organic side but we do paid stuff on on facebook and google primarily those two yeah so you you were mentioning earlier that you started out in video and now mm -hmm. you're it's funny that now you're you know so audio but you send these cool videos <laughs> and i just can you talk a little bit about that because i love getting sure. them and how did you start doing it and like do you have like a kind of like a process, little process. To yeah Kind of, sort of. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I forgot how I got into it, to be very honest. I've always done screen capture stuff, you know, like when teaching. That's something Matt and I have done since we began, you know, 13 years ago or so, or 14. Is just, you know, anything we're trying to teach or convey, like, we'll record it. And I am I can write and all that stuff. I just don't want to send a big, long email. I think about it too much, to be very honest. Like, I get stuck in my head. So I'm like, I know the second that I get my phone out and my Loom is on there. So Loom, Loom yeah. is, the, is the app that I'm using, L-O-O-M. Um, I think there's like a free version. The paid version is like four or five bucks a month or something. I don't know. It's, it's totally worth it. And, uh, but yeah, like, so I got into just making personalized videos. I was like, you know what? Instead of typing in like, spinning my wheels why don't I just turn on the camera and just like I know I can talk to someone I'm really good at that let's just do that it's the best it's so personal and every time you send me one which I mean uh -huh. you send me like three total or something I'm just like <laughs> okay at least you have to do this this is like the best like it comes across as so much more personal and mm. you know I'm smiling the whole time like because I feel like you're just like talking to me in the, and versus yeah. reading the email so I just think that that's a, a really nice touch Thank you. Just yeah. you know, just client relations, just you know, building relationships and, and oh, you know. yeah. Some of some of the ways I use it. So I'll just uh, I'll say this. So it's a thanking every podcast guest afterwards because our big thing is we're trying to grow that relationship with every guest we bring on. Like you, you introduced us to Will from Ojai the other uh, week. We had him on the show a couple weeks ago. And we hit it off. And so that was one of the first things I did is either the day of or right after, I'll go in my backyard, sit in a chair, get my iPhone out with the Loom app on there. And um, typically I like to be outside and kind of just get away from the office. I'm like, let's change it up. Let's bring them into my world a little bit. So I think it was either you or someone else that is like, I wanted to just talk back to the phone. Like it was. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> somebody else too. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Yeah. I, I think you're the only one that told me that, but it, um, I think it was you that was like, you just made my day or something. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but, and this is not a joke. It was like, I sent that to, I think it was Aaron actually. Mm -hmm. um, and she said the same exact thing. And then someone else said that like a few days later, I was like, geez, <laughs> I'm like, this is wild. How like just a video can just totally stand out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's the key right now with like, anything it's just how to stand out and how to mm. be make things still personable and you know authentic and not yeah. cheesy and you know it's it's not any of those things it's, it's awesome yeah so yeah we use it for that we use it for like you said client relations so checking in on people or reviewing things like there's a desktop app as well so i'll use that uh, on the desktop if i'm ever reviewing something or even selling a new service or offer or whatever it might be when we were selling a lot of podcast services, that's how we would do it. Yeah. And people love it because they're getting an education, they're seeing, they're kind of visualizing everything. Um, I've seen a lot of pitches now starting to use that, just like for big agency owners, starting to use Loom or some type of screen capture that shows a personality because that's obviously a huge part of any client relations. And yeah. then the actual like thing. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I think it's a huge tool. Definitely, definitely. So just circling back to just podcasts in general. So if you guys were starting your podcast today, just what, what would you do different or new or the mm. same? I would hope that I uh, found my rhythm faster. <laughs> it took like three years for us to like truly find our voice, I feel like, and we're probably still going to find it even further. Who knows? But um, our personality really came out like about maybe two and a half years into the show, which it just got a lot more fun and I feel like it attracted better people just, you know, from the client or from the guest side, but also the listener side. And it just made business cool. <laughs> you know, like just way, I was going to say funner, but you know, but like, yeah, like it's just really, I think the personality, if you can bring your personality out into all pieces of your business, it's just going to attract more people that you enjoy and 
feel like the quality becomes better. You're gonna not gonna be so stressed out. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of gray hair. And I think it's probably more genetic, but I'm like it's probably also for me hustling way too hard and trying to like fit a round peg into a square hole kind of thing or vice versa. So it's like just go with the flow. Be yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's great work. advice. Any yeah. technology that you think is just just came out that maybe if you're starting a yeah. podcast that you should this I would happen. say yeah, don't don't overthink the equipment side of things. I know I think you use an identical setup actually right now, like a Yeti mic yeah. and Bose, Bose headphones. Like, yeah, but my <laughs> like Yeti, images right here. My Yeti mic is like I think it's five years old. It's so Perfect. old. Perfect. Yeah, and I, <laughs> when I started, you know, social PR secrets, I'm like, okay, I I have to get a new mic. I was asking you what what equipment. <laughs> yeah. I just haven't got around to it. So you're right. Don't need to. I mean, this isn't the one I typically podcast in. This is like my home microphone, but. Um, even when Matt and I are podcasting, they're only a hundred dollar sure SM58 microphones. Like they're not fancy. They're like stage microphones. If anybody's thinking about them. like, what else? It's just like what a singer would be using at a concert. It's that microphone. So it's like, we're not fancy, but it makes us sound great. <laughs> and like, you know, so that's the thing is like, don't get caught up in the equipment. Yeah. Um, but like squad cast is really good as an app for, if you don't want to capture video, even though I do recommend capturing video, um, Squadcast kind of makes you sound like you're in the same room with someone. It's a little better than Zoom audio, even though we record over Zoom. I know we're doing that here too, but that's nice because you can get the video. And you Yeah. Know. Seems like yeah. every, there's something, you know, a little bit imperfect about every platform, you know, that you're going to find a little bit of a hiccup. And I don't know, I just feel like today in today's world, everybody's a little bit more forgiving about not being perfect and it's always been don't be perfect but now it's even more like okay you know <laughs> wi-fi is not working or my dog's barking in the background because i'm working from home so it's just kind yeah. of like, i just say go for it you know go for what you're looking to do that's it i would say there's two apps that are both very inexpensive and i'm using both of them right now because of the reasons you just said uh, <laughs> not dog barking but baby screaming um is crisp k-r-i-s-p yeah. is a noise cancellation app, which is like five bucks a month or something, but, and I think it's free for certain hours, but you can hook it up to your microphone. So it essentially will take that as an input, filter out all the background noise. And then on Zoom, I just selected the Crisp app and now it sounds crystal clear. Like you won't hear a baby or even a dog barking if she was just like, maybe not next to me, but like right outside the door, let's yeah. say. Oh, that's so cool. it, yeah. So that's great for podcasting. If someone's worried about that, it's like, no, you have no excuse now. You could be in a coffee shop and probably podcast if you wanted to. Um, and then the other one is trip mode. Uh, so T R I P M O D E. And, uh, that one. So like I have it on right now and I, it blocks the bandwidth usage on your computer to certain apps. So right now I only have zoom active right now to suck up any of that bandwidth because, because we're all at home and everyone's using online stuff right now. So that means internet's going to drag. True. So this That's way we can keep video going and not lagging. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is one kind of just like weird question. So do you ever <laughs> go back and do you listen to your interviews that you do, that you and Matt do? Do you ever listen to them or do you just like uh, on? select ones? I used to now I'm just like, I will if, if it's something that I got a reference, even though then I typically go to my notes. Um, <laughs> but uh, for a while, I did not because I was like, oh, it's my voice. I don't want to hear that. It's, <laughs> But now I'm so desensitized to seeing myself or hearing myself. Um, I did for a little bit when I was wanting to perfect or like improve how I was getting my thoughts across or yeah, maybe talking too much. Like, I was like, oh, I probably should have shut up there when I asked that question just to let them do the talking. Like, so I, it's typically for those things. If I'm trying to critique myself, if there's a specific reason to get yeah. better, basically. Yeah, I hear from both. Like, I barely ever go back and listen to mine. And somebody asked me the other day, oh, did, you know, I was listening to this. You should listen <laughs> to it again. I'm like, no way. I'm not. Listening. I said, I just want you guys to tell me if something went wrong when you're doing, when they're putting together the, you know the recording Edit. Is not, yeah. yeah just let me know just make sure that like you know at the end it's you know there's not any like blank spots or whatever yeah. yeah um i'm also wondering what are your thoughts on the whole joe rogan spotify deal where do you Ooh. think that's going with that you it, just is that a new trend 
It's, uh, I, I think it is actually, I read an article where Spotify allocated and they said this like yeah, last year when they started acquiring businesses and stuff that they have about $500 million to spend on influencers or podcasts that they want to acquire and become exclusive. So after Joe Rogan, yeah, like if, I mean, anyone's living under a rock in podcast land he made uh, or he got offered I think at least a hundred million dollars maybe more for an exclusivity deal for only just a I think a handful of years so it's not like forever um, so it's a, at least a hundred million bucks that he just made for doing that and um, yeah of course the loyal, loyal audience for any podcast would probably be like ah, how dare you? I'm, I'm, I like to listen to him on YouTube and it's like well now you got to go to Spotify. Right. That's okay. It's not really going to end your, <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. Um, but Kim Kardashian got a show as well recently, right after Joe. I don't know for the amount of money, but I'm sure it was pretty high as well. Um, but I think that's a brand new podcast they're starting, you know, under them. But Spotify is definitely making moves. Like Apple is definitely the popularity is going down because they're not, they're not as aggressive as Spotify. Uh, if you look at like the worldwide maps of players, Spotify is already taking over most of the world. And I think iTunes is still primarily a U.S. you know preference, but I don't think that's going to be like that for much longer at this rate. Just the user yeah. interface of Spotify is so awesome. Like I yeah. love it for so many reasons. Oh, so many. I mean, discoverability is easier. There's uh, you're already using it typically for listening to to music where, you know, Apple kind of already fell off there a little bit, you know, with Apple Music, and they have good stuff there still, but like it's, yeah, Spotify is just kind of this bigger, now they have an ad platform, Spotify does, that's getting better and better, so I mean, like, I don't know, pretty soon they're gonna, I think Spotify is gonna just take over the podcast space, just because they're focused on it more. Yeah, focus on optimizing for Spotify to getting found mm-hmm. in search on Spotify. Any, any tips on oh. that? Um, on that one specifically, it's still too new. Like we're trying to figure out what be there. And like, if you're not on Spotify, you're missing out. So go on Spotify. Um, we actually, Matt just sent me a screenshot last week that showed our downloads for the last like three months have doubled every month, doubled or tripled. It was one of the two, but basically just Spotify listeners are, it's going up and the trend is, doesn't look like it's stopping. So it's definitely the the demand is on Spotify. And how do you measure that? Is there a certain um, platform that you use that uh-huh. measures like all of the different? Yeah, that would be like a podcast host would, would give you that data. And so like not... the Castos or? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, and we use Libsyn for yeah. ours and each, ser- our, each host will give you different data. So some of it's really poor, some of it's better. Podcast data is not perfect, by the way. So yeah. unfortunately, it's all kind of not perfect. I was just, um, you know, looking at all the different, you know, Google Play and Apple and Spotify and just looking at each one of them, you kind of look at them just like its own search engine and Uh how things are found and how you can optimize maybe a little bit differently in each one. And I just, you know, doing it for social PR secrets and then also researching different, you know, for articles that I'm writing on different podcasts. I was just, it was just interesting to see like you're searching a keyword and like what actually comes up, which is, it's, it's a different there, whatever the algorithm is, it's just different than it would be. Let's just say like, it's not what you would think it would be like, like Google's algorithm, mm-hmm. or, you know, it, they, they're. Yeah. And so. it's, yeah, and who knows exactly because you can't, there's no ratings, you know, but there's follows instead mm-hmm. of subscribers you can follow. And yeah, who knows? Cause you know, they have a crazy algorithm Spotify does with music already mm-hmm. with just like how it picks out the songs that you probably want to listen to or these mixes and it's all based off of your you know your usage. So I, I would imagine it's some more like that rather than and then searching is probably pulling in a combo of, you know, what you're following, what you're listening to, and also kind of what you're searching for. Yeah, I would imagine that's what yeah. it seems like. But um, who knows? I don't think anybody totally knows quite yet. <laughs> we have, everybody's got to watch Spotify. I think that's what we all have to do. Definitely. Well, Joe, this has been amazing. So tell us what, if you have anything promotional happening, where we should go to just find you. I know you mentioned your group, anything else Uh happening in your affiliate world or should we subscribe (laughs) to a newsletter? 
Well, um, we have some playbooks, and I guess it's your option because um, we talked about a lot. So we have <laughs> we have one about around affiliate marketing, and these are free playbooks that I would give away, or a podcasting one. There's also a traffic generation one, but I feel like uh, podcasting or affiliate marketing should be one of the two. What do you What do you think is best? I, I think the podcast. I think both would be really both of them? Right. yeah that's possible i don't know <laughs> can you I, have both <laughs> can we have both well i, I think oh. if i if i had to pick one i think the podcasting just because yeah podca- you, you guys break it down really well if somebody wants to start a podcast i, I mean i think that your system and what you guys how you bring everybody through it is perfect Thank you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so say that cause you said, uh, yeah, no, we have a podcast playbook. That's basically like all the different notes from these amazing shows that we've brought on. And then also a lot that Matt and I have done. So if you go to hustle and flowchart.com slash PR secrets, oh, cool. uh, you can, you can get that, uh, playbook for free. And I don't know how many pages it leaves like I think yeah. it's 50 or more pages of just like intense, you know, like, Go down the yeah. rabbit hole stuff on podcasts. I have it and I highly recommend it. So definitely nice. take advantage of that. Thank and, you. Um, so thank you so much. We're going to switch gears yeah. right now. If anybody wants to join us and you can go over to Digital Detox Secrets. Um, but thank mm-hmm. you so much, Joe. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. And we're going to yeah. take like a quick pause and start back up again. Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group, a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com slash free.